Every year in April, American Mahjong players eagerly await the release of the National Mahjong League card. In this video, I'll show the results of my analysis and share actionable insights, then finish with tips for a smooth transition. If you're new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. We're going to start with a the baseline, then we're going to dig into the nitty gritty analytics and insights, followed by findings with actionable commentary, and we'll end with tips for a smooth transition. The National Mahjong League publishes their annual card of valid hands for American Mahjong players in April. The rules of the game rarely change. If you haven't purchased your copy of Mahjong Made Easy, please do so. I think it's prudent for at least one member of any group to have a copy of this booklet because it is their official guidebook. Not all the rules are in there though, so make sure you visit the Maj Life Wiki so you can search for rules that might be omitted. The methods used to describe the hands stay the same. The categories of the hands typically stay the same. The changes are in the shapes and patterns of the hands. Let's get into the nitty gritty analytics and insights. When I get the new card, I do a side-by-side -side comparison and I count hands. I include line level variations as two hands. So for evens number three as an example, this would be counted as two hands. Let's talk about the value of the hands on the card. 66% of the hands on the card have a 25 point value. 21% of the hands have a 30 point value and 13% of the hands on the card have a 40 to 75 point value. We're going to couple this with an analysis by recurring and prevalent shapes. The top six with three hands or more for the given shape are Pung Kong, Pung Kong, Pair Triple Kong, Pair Pung, Kong Pung Pair, or Pyramid, Kong Kong Pair Kong, Pair Kong Pair Kong Pair, and Kong Pair Pair Pung Pung. There are seven hands with two shapes each, and there are 22 hands with unique shapes. The 2023 card has mostly easy hands balanced by variety. So I think beginners are going to enjoy the card with 66% of the hands being easy and experienced players will enjoy the card because of variety. Let's talk about the attributes. Attributes are components of hands on the card. We're going to start with wins. 19% of the hands on the card use wins, and that includes little moves. For example, the last hand under the year and the concealed hand. That those would be examples of news, all four wins. 29% of the hands use dragons. Seven more hands than wins. 30% of the hands of the card use pairs of flowers. 14% use kongs of flowers. Together, that's 44%. 40% of the hands on the card use like numbers. There are only two hands in the category, but they're all over the card. 69% of the hands use mixed suits. 27% of the hands, use one suit. Gather all suits until you run out of discards. Then decide if you want to play one suit or mix suits and discard accordingly. 
84 percent of the hands on the card use big multiples those would be pungs kongs and quints 61 percent use little multiples those would be the pairs together that's 91 percent 91 percent of the hands on the card use multiples let's pull all those stats together and talk a little bit about hand development target multiples and choose a category that uses most of the remaining tiles to support it gather tiles that can be used in the category regardless of suit build around the multiples to optimize quick hand development defend along the way target gather build defend american mahjong is a game of multiples target the multiples to optimize hand development if you don't have multiples target the predominant pattern when a multiple forms reassess and target the multiple let's talk about the categories at a high level i'll share more insights later odds has 14 hands in the category that's 20 percent of the hands on the card there are 21 in other categories and maybe more by player's choice for example if you look at wins and dragons number two you could start at a two which would mean there would be only one odd number but you could start at a three and there would be two odd numbers because you have a sequence of three so i didn't include counts at that level of detail in this analysis consecutive run has 11 hands in the category at 16 percent there are 15 in other categories plus you have the flexibility of the run winds and dragons has 11 hands at 16 percent there are two hands outside the category one in the year and one in quince 369 has eight hands 11 percent evens has seven at 10 percent but there are four hands with evens in the addition hands singles and pairs has six hands nine percent no wins the year has four hands at six percent there's the year hand in wins and dragons and of course singles and pairs addition has four hands at six percent mixed suits only quince has three hands at four percent like numbers and consecutive run patterns like numbers has two hands at three percent like numbers are all over the card though gather and build around the strength of the hand choose a category that uses the strength of the hand with most of your tiles if you are between categories or hands choose the one where there are no gaps if the choice is equitable with an option of consecutive run choose it for flexibility let's dig into findings with actionable commentary there are four hands in the year category but there are three hands that use year tiles in other categories here's an example of year number three the league confirmed that the text should read 2023 any suit pungs any two dragons so you can use two or three suits with this hand evens are going to be affected by year and addition hands you can see that twos and fours are used in the year category and in the addition category any like numbers has two hands to choose from 
but don't be deceived. There are like numbers in every category on the card except Winds and Dragons. Here are three examples of like numbers, one from Addition Hands number three, Consecutive Run number six, and Odds number two. Like numbers are in 40% of the hands on the card. Any like numbers number two may cause problems during the transition period. This is a concealed hand. Math play is back as addition hands. The league surprised us with mixed suits only, so memorization should be easy. We have two examples, addition hands number one and number four. The predominant patterns are like numbers and evens. Quince has only three hands this year. Quint number two is unusual in that there is no flexibility with the run. Use these numbers only. Two, three, four, five. Consecutive run has fewer hands in the category than odds. However, there are 15 hands with runs in other categories. Here are three examples. We have year number three, consecutive run of two, three. We have addition number one, consecutive run of one, two, and we have wins and dragons number seven, consecutive run one and two. Odds has the highest hand count within the category, but it'll never be as flexible as consecutive run. Here are three hands from the odd category, one, three, three, five, with the opposite dragons for little odds and big odds, and then we have a mixed suit option. This is Odds number one, dash two, one three in dots, Kong of fives, seven nine in cracks. Winds and Dragons has more options, including five hands with number tiles. Three of seven hands have north, south, and east, west as options. Here are some examples. Winds and Dragons number two, dash two, east and west with a run, Pair, pair, Kong. Then we have Winds and Dragons number four, dash one, north and south with the year. And we have the concealed hand, news with two consecutive numbers in two suits. There is a gotcha hand, Winds and Dragons number one, two options, Kong, Pung, Pung, Kong, and Pung, Kong, Kong, Pung. Dragon hands have a nominal change with the number of hands overall, but there are seven more hands with dragons than wins. Consider passing wins before passing dragons and try to pass one at a time. Be mindful of discarding wins and dragons in the end game because there are 10 hands that use these tiles as singles and pairs. 369 is a challenging category because it only uses three numbers and there's a wide spread between each number. Make sure you have a good representation of these tiles when you play this category. Here's an example of a dealt hand with a potential for 369 being the predominant pattern. Every number is represented in mixed suits. So this would be a good candidate for that category. Singles and pairs hands represent each category except wins and dragons. The big year hand will not be as difficult as last year's, but it'll still be challenging. Let's talk about promising tandem categories. This is the switchability to another category or hand based on shapes and tiles being used. Dependency is based on being able to use similar shapes plus two or more tiles. Feasibility is based on the number of visible exposures and discards at each decision point. For the year, you can tandem with any like numbers using twos and threes. For quints, you can use twos and threes because they're consecutive and there are two hands in quints that are consecutive. That's the same reason why you can use consecutive run with twos and threes specifically. Winds and Dragons also has consecutive run hands 
three numbers in a range and two numbers in a range. So two, three with the year might work for a tandem with winds and dragons. The year category can tandem with singles and pairs with three hands. The second one down and the two on the bottom. With evens, you can tandem with any like numbers using twos and fours. You can tandem with the addition category because you have two, four, six, eight in addition. Consecutive run could work if you get filler tiles. For example, if you're playing the third hand down and you get threes and fives, you can play two, three, four, five. And the evens category does have an even single and pair hand and there are several consecutive hands that you might be able to tandem with if you have fillers three five and seven and nine i suppose any like numbers can tandem with every category except wins. There are like numbers all over the card. 40% of the hands on the card use like numbers. Addition can tandem with evens and like numbers as shared before, but also 369. There's one hand, the third one down, with threes and sixes. Quince can tandem with consecutive run and like numbers. But because wins and dragons have some consecutive numbers, and of course wins, you can tandem with that category. Also, because the second quint uses two, three, four, five, if you get more little odds, you could probably switch to odds using three, five. Consecutive run can tandem with all the categories on the card except addition and three, six, nine. Addition because there's only one hand with a slight consecutive run, one, two, that's it. And three, six, nine, has a widespread between each number, so that doesn't qualify for being a promising tandem category. Otherwise, consecutive run can tandem with any of them depending on how your drawing goes and how the hand develops with multiples. For evens and odds, you would need to omit tiles accordingly, based on whichever category you switch to. Odds can tandem with like numbers, consecutive run in wins and dragons with omissions, three, six, nine, of course, not using sixes, and also singles and pairs. There's one odd hand, but there's a three, six, nine hand, so threes and nines might be useful and then you have a couple of consecutive hands where you can omit tiles to help you with that switch. Winds and Dragons can tandem with consecutive run and the year category. 369 can tandem with like numbers, addition, one hand, third one down, odds because we're using threes and nines, and there's one single and pair 369 hand. For singles and pairs, you can tandem with all the categories on the card except for wins and dragons and quints. The reason you can't tandem with quints is because you're working with singles and pairs, so your multiples are going to be little, and you need big multiples for quints. 
I didn't see any changes on the back of the card. There is a modified note on the inside left panel regarding how the white dragon is used. The white dragon is used as a zero. It may be used with any suit. When a white dragon is in a year block, it represents a number and it's neutral. The comment that you cannot use a joker with a year block has been removed, but it still applies because you have singles and a pair this year. The twos are a pair. The white dragon as a zero is a single and the three is a single. So you cannot use a joker for those, nor can you call a discard to complete that block. The only time you can win with one of those tiles is if your hand is ready to win with just waiting on one tile. We're now going to talk about the problematic parentheticals. Year number three, the league confirmed that the text should read 2023 any suit pungs any two dragons. So this can be two or three suits. We have an example here of BAMs with green dragon and white dragon. So this would be a two suit option. Year number four should have text that reads any two suits. The pair of twos is a different suit than the pung and pair in the second suit. For 369 number five, the text should read like numbers three, six or nine. The Kongs have to be like numbers. So in this example, we're using threes, but you could, could have Kongs of sixes or Kongs of nines, but you cannot have a Kong of threes and a Kong of sixes. They must be like numbers. Let's briefly talk about carryover hands. These would be hands that repeat from one year to the next. Evens number two is the same. We have pair, single, single pair, Kong, Kong, like number Kongs in even numbers. Consecutive run number five, pair of flowers, triple Kong. We have a one suit option and a mixed suit option. Odds number one, we have an example of a pyramid hand, pair, Pung, Kong, Pung pair in one suit or mixed suits. Odds number three, Pair of flowers, triple Kong. We have little odds and big odds in mixed suits. Singles and pairs, number five, seven consecutive pairs in one suit. And finally, the big ear hand, which is off one number, but essentially it's the same hand. A pair of flowers with the year in three suits. This year, there's only one fatal pung, and that is with flowers. Hands with flowers can be used for pairs or kongs only. Let's talk about hot commodities during the Charleston. Rarely pass like numbers, flowers, and white dragons. For this decade, passing twos will also be risky. If you pass any of these tiles, pass one at a time to different players. Hot commodities after the Charleston. There are no safe tiles this year because there are singles and pairs of every tile in the set. Survey discards and exposures, then count the cost of discarding hot tiles, especially in the end game. And this applies to those same tiles that are hot commodities during the Charleston. We're going to finish up with tips for a smooth transition. Here are top three mistakes when transitioning to the new card. Number one, passing risky tiles in the Charleston. Hold or make use of these tiles and pass them rarely. Number two, claiming a discard for an exposure on a concealed hand. Check the card before committing to an exposure. Number three, playing a hand from the previous year. Check the card before committing to an exposure. To help you build your confidence, I have three recommendations. Number one, focus on strength. 
for flexibility and to optimize quick hand development, target multiples. If you don't have multiples, target the predominant pattern and gather supporting tiles. When a multiple forms, reassess and target the multiple. Number two, practice makes progress. These are some great skill builders that you can do at home if you have a set of tiles. If you don't have a set of tiles, look for a link in the video description below for one I highly recommend. I just want to briefly share about each one of these skill builders and incidentally you can find them on my YouTube channel. Category modeling is when you create every hand on the card with your tiles at home. Create the hand as you see on the card and then modify it based on the text in the parentheses. Random pulls is when you take 13 or 14 random tiles and you practice identifying the strength of the hand. Charleston modeling is similar to random pulls because you're going to create a dealt hand to practice identifying the strength of the hand and then you're going to create a mock Charleston so you can practice decision making with incoming passes. Charleston chain reaction is also similar but with Charleston chain reaction, you're going to look at your dealt hand, pick a plan A and a plan B, and do the exercise in two iterations, taking photos along the way so that you can recreate it and work on plan B in the second iteration. Then you compare results. It's a great way to test your instincts. Charleston force is when you pre-select categories on the card and you force hands in just those categories while you do Charleston modeling. Charleston sprints is when you do Charleston modeling on a timer. You practice making quick decisions. For beginners, I recommend four minutes. For intermediate players, three minutes. And for advanced players, two minutes. When you can get to that two minute mark, you can play online comfortably with a timer, but you could also maybe play in a tournament without breaking a sweat. Finally, solitaire, when you play four hands at one time, you've got to be able to compartmentalize your decision making though, because you're going to see all four hands. But if you can do that, there's much that can be learned in playing a game of solitaire. Number three, play often and observe. Play with peers to relax and have fun. Play with advanced players to learn by observation. Play online between in-person games and watch my videos. I just want to remind you that if you ever have a question about the rules of the game, go to Maj Life and query the wiki because you can find all the rules in there and you can even find some strategies too. Free and on demand. You can find me on my website, MajLife.com. I'm also on YouTube and Facebook. If you just use hashtag MoshLife, you should find me. I hope you found my analysis, insights, and tips helpful. To dig deeper, look for a link in the video description below to download a free ebook with all the nitty gritty details. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.